if you happen to get your dog barking or something like that, if you could mute it so it's not bothering everybody else. And if you have questions as we go along, just raise your hand or put it in the chat box, whatever, whatever you'd like to do. Um, since we are recording, if you don't want your audio on uh, or your video on, that's a, a, a toggle at the bottom left of your screen. And if you want to change your name and your little Brady Bunch square, uh, you can do that uh, as illustrated there. You just click on the three dots on your box and change your name. So with that, we're going to get started. i um, going to talk about what are phone banks and why they're so important. It's been shown, there's been a lot of research done that personal contact with voters is the best way to get them to get out and vote. And that's what our goal is right now is contacting all of our strong Democrats in Kendall or Hayes or wherever you are, Bandera, um, and uh, making sure they get out to vote because you know that it's the turnout issue that, that's such a big deal here in Texas. Um, phone banks are especially important right now because we can't block walk. Nobody's comfortable with knocking on doors right now because of the COVID uh, pandemic going on. So. Phone banking is really our only way right now to be in direct contact with voters. What it, a virtual phone bank does, a virtual phone bank, um, you know, phone banks in the past is we've given you paper lists with names to call and you write down the answers and it's really not a very efficient way of doing things. A virtual phone bank is something you do right on your computer. And so it makes it a lot easier to make the calls and to record the answers when you're talking to the voters. Uh, so the data is better and um, it, it just makes things a, a lot easier. Um, like a paper list only shows one phone number because of space limitations, but uh, somebody's record in our voter database, a uh, voter database is called VAN or Vote Builder. It's the same thing. And uh, that, that database is what drives these phone banks we run um, we run queries on that database to give us a list of voters. The, the one we're going to be talking about today is uh, low propensity voters, people that we think are Democrats, but that don't vote very often in precinct 4050 in Candle County, which is Janice Ballard's precinct. And we use our voter database van to pull that list. And some of these voters may have three or four phone numbers that we could try, but on a paper list, you only, it only shows one. On a virtual phone bank, you can try all three or four of them. Um, so who are we calling? Um, when we create phone banks, we have different targets and different messages. Uh, and we usually are only calling either strong Democrats uh, uh, people that lean Democrat, we think, or like I said before, the low propensity voters. So for the most part, we're, we're only talking to what we call friendlies. Um, every once in a while, especially on that low propensity voter uh, uh, lists, um, you'll run into a Republican and you just say, thank you for your time. You hang up, you mark them as a Republican, and what that does is pulls them off of any future lists that we run, so we're not wasting our time with them anymore. Uh, we don't want to talk to the strong Trump, reporter, Trump supporters. We're not going to convince them of anything. So we want to focus our attention on getting our strong Democratic base out to vote. Okay. Oops. Sorry. Um, some of the past phone banks uh, that we've done is, again, you know, calling the low propensity voters to encourage them to vote. Another one we've done is calling all seniors who have received a vote by mail application to make sure they mail that in in plenty of time. So that's another one that we've done. Um, another a future uh, virtual phone bank that we'll do and a really important one is uh, we can create a list of all of our strong Democrats who have not yet early voted. During the early voting period, the voter database is updated nightly. And this record that you see on the screen, that's my personal early voting record from the primary runoff. And it shows when I voted and which, which party I voted on. And we can run a query that, that will we'll, we'll tell it, first of all, show us all our strong Democrats. 
and then we'll say narrow that down and only show us those strong Democrats who haven't voted yet. And then we can call all of those those Democrats and say you only have until you know November or October 30th to vote to really encourage them to to vote early. So that's a really important virtual phone bank that we'll be doing in October. And we'll basically have some kind of virtual phone bank going on from now all the way through to election day, probably including election day. And what we're gonna do now is, we're, I'm gonna hop over to that other uh, handout and uh, where is it? There it is. And this is uh, what we're, how to basically use a virtual phone bank. This has a, several screenshots in it that are going to look different than the virtual phone bank that, that you'll get, but it's still, still the same basic idea. Excuse me. And the other thing that you need to know is, you know, I keep talking about VAN and Vote Builder, our voter database. You don't have to have access to that to use a virtual phone bank. Anybody can use a virtual phone bank. And uh, in fact, the only, uh, besides me and Kevin, the only one of you on the call that has access to VAN is Janice Ballard because she's a precinct chair. But everybody can use a virtual phone bank because we set them up to, to be accessible for non-VAN users. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. So your first step is you go to a website called OpenVPB. VPB stands for Virtual Phone Bank. So you go to openvpb.com and click Get Started. And you'll need to create what's called an action ID, which is based on your email. And you wanna write this ID and password down because when you go back into any virtual phone bank, you'll need it to access uh, to access the virtual phone bank. So you, when you click on that get started, then the next thing that'll happen is you'll see this create an action ID account. And so you click on that and you'll get a screen that looks like this and you fill it out. Uh, it will require a cell phone number because uh, there's some authentication that has to happen. And uh, again, you type in a password, your name, cell phone number, you check the privacy policy box and then you click the create account button and it will create an action ID account. If you've already done this and you've just forgotten your password, you just, let me go back up. You just click that forgot your password and it will email it to you. So again, write it down or you follow whatever instructions they send you to reset your password and you should be able to get into the virtual phone bank then. Um, you'll need the virtual phone bank code. Uh, I sent that earlier this morning and you can get that from your precinct chair or the van coordinator for your county or um, uh, Becky, uh, Becky Strain is our van coordinator. I have the codes, Kevin has the codes. So, uh, and we're gonna try to get some of these set up also on our um, events page. So you can sign up to do a phone bank there. So once you put in the code, it'll say join a phone bank and that's where you put in that code. I recommend copying and pasting. That's a lot easier because it's a bunch of gobbledygook. It's just a, you know, a, a random string of numbers so, and letters. So uh, copy and paste that code there and then click virtual phone bank. And then you will get a screen and I'm a, that looks kind of like this, okay? And we're going to go through all of these uh, all of these fields. Um, the first one is kind of some statistics for the voter. Uh, the preferred phone number, uh, the voter's name, and that's over here. Is it, it kind of picked a bad name because his name is Sheriff, and it's not it's not the office. That's his name. <laughs> I, I was doing this yesterday. And I thought, oh golly, I wish I'd pick somebody else. Um, but it has phone numbers. Uh, what county? they're in and then uh, they're voting city and zip. Uh, it's not showing it here, but it also has a precinct number. If you're doing a large phone bank, say Kendall County wide, and you only wanna do a specific precinct, you can, uh, you can skip voters and I'll talk about that. So that's, you've got kind of vital statistics for the voter here and the uh, primary phone number, it'll have 
age and, and sex, then uh, uh, I couldn't read Sheriff. And then this here is the script. Let me go back and make sure that I have this. Yeah. Um, this is what you're gonna ask the voter. And uh, at the end, when Kevin does his live call, he'll show you the script that we're working on right now. And basically this is what you're gonna be asking the voter. And then it gives you a drop down box um, to record the answer when you ask them the question. So for example, um, if you're asking, do you plan to vote on Biden Harris? Yes, no, maybe that drop down box will have yes, no, or maybe. And that's where you record that answer. Um, more often than not, the voter won't be there or won't pick up the phone or whatever. So you click, I couldn't reach sheriff, the voter, and it'll give you a series of options. And these are those options, not home, refused, deceased, moved, Spanish, left message, wrong number, disconnected. Um, the wrong number and disconnected, that those are important because if you do that, then we won't, those phone numbers won't show up on our lists anymore and we won't try them again. So that's important information to record. Um, the refused is also important because if they don't wanna talk to you, then recording that refused, again, will pull them off of future lists so we're not wasting our time with them. Let me, I just got a, I got a text message and I wanted to make sure it wasn't from somebody that <laughs> was trying to get on the call or something. Golly Moses. Um, hang on, sorry, no, my sisters are going berserk so they can uh, just <laughs> leave them be for a little bit. Um, if there is another phone number, you'll see an option that says try number two of two. Um, and you just click on that uh, to get to the second number. Um, if the voter seems amenable, uh, in, in a lot of times you'll get hold of somebody that just really wants to chat and they'd love to get involved. And, and uh, if that happens and they're willing to share their email address, please get that and write it down and, and get it back to us. Um, uh, when you're using Open, open VPB, um, you won't be able to record the email address and you'll need to send it to somebody that has access to the voter database, but please do that if you find somebody that um, would, would like to share that information. Did somebody have a question? Somebody had, oh, okay. Um, the caller ID, uh -huh. how, I ignore every phone call that comes here that's from a city, you know, it'll mm -hmm. say Tula, Texas. I just ignore it. What, when I call someone using this, what is my caller ID? Does it have my name or Democratic? It, it'll, it'll, no, it, I mean, you're using your own cell phone. So it'll have, yeah. And, yeah. you know, there's a way in most cell phone carriers that you can block your number going out. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, a lot of people don't answer those either. Um, we are exploring an option where you can use the phone functionality within the virtual phone bank to make an anonymous call, but that's not, we're, we're just, that's a brand new feature that they just introduced, and it's going to take us a little while to figure out how to use it and if we can use it. Uh, and that would, that'll, what, what, the, what that would do is um, the outgoing number that the that the voter sees would be an 830 number from Kendall County, but it would still be a number they don't recognize, right? So um, that's why most of most of the time you're not talking to people is because they don't answer the phone. It won't say Texas Democratic Party. Or no, no, it will not. Yeah, I would feel mm -hmm. better answering the phone for that. <laughs> so uh, so that's how that works. Um, when you're done, um, that you've got three options at the bottom. You can, if you're done making calls for the day, you just do stop making calls and it'll uh, kick you out of the virtual phone bank. You can do skip for, you know, for some reason, for example, if this is a phone bank that had multiple precincts and you only wanted to do say precinct 4050, you could skip any voter keep skipping voters until you see somebody that pops up in precinct 4050. And then the other option, it's, it's blued out here because uh, save and next call only lights up when you have recorded information. Um, 
so that's really kind of it as far as as making uh, making calls goes. It's it's pretty straightforward. So let me stop sharing my screen and and then Kevin is going to bring up his phone bank and we're, he's going to do kind of a sample call here. And he's muted. So <laughs> okay. I'm hoping this works <laughs> earlier and um, a couple of uh, oh, quick things, you know, since we're told and I'm not the expert, but we're told by the experts at the Texas Democratic Party that the most effective way to reach the voter is face to face block walking. And if we can't do that, the second most effective is actually live talking to a person. And I know uh, a number of you have block walked, particularly uh, Janice, you've done uh, block walking. Both Janices have done, done a lot of block walking and stuff. And, and uh, it's a shame that we can't, can't get out and do that. But calling on the phone is also good. All right. Okay, here, this is an actual phone bank screen that you would see. And you can see it's got the person's name, their age, their sex, and the phone number. Uh, what I always like to do uh, when I start is to review the script because there's some parts of it that may not be appropriate. And also it's not necessary to just read the script. You can kind of get a feel for what's in it and then, uh, then wing it. And, and that makes it a little bit more personal. Can I, uh, Kevin, can you scroll back up real quick? Yeah. You see that thing at the top, it says phone bank progress. Um, mm -hmm. If you, if you're using open VPB, you're not going to see that. Only people that log into a uh, virtual phone bank on van see that progress bar. Uh -huh. so don't be surprised if you don't see that on open virtual open VPB. So right. Yeah. And, and so um, this, uh, this particular phone bank was meant to reach people who didn't vote in the primary in the Democratic primary. Uh, and Laura did say that every once in a while you will encounter Republicans and it depends on how tight we put the screening mechanism, but it is possible and and you don't you always want to be absolutely polite, but you want to get off that call as quick as you can and mark them Republican uh, because you don't want to waste your time. Now, uh, again, you know, reading the script, that's exactly what what I just covered. We're pretty sure these are Democrats. Uh, but they're, uh, you know, we haven't been great at in engaging them. And it's meant to be personable. So uh, you always try to identify the person. Sometimes I won't throw the name out. I'll just say, you know, I'm uh, Kevin Henning, uh, a volunteer with the Kendall County Democratic Party. And all the folks we're particularly calling here are Democrats. And so we're, 2020 is a crucial year, um, and uh, can we count on you to uh, vote for Democrats up and down the ballot? And if they swear at you and say, I'm a Trumper, and here's the little screen, you would put strong Republican. And then others, uh, depending on where they're at, you know, strong Democrat, lean Democrat, I uh, had a great conversation the other day with a young man who, you know, he's uh, he's a ticket splitter and he votes for who he thinks is the best. Um, and uh, the second box in this is uh, areas where, you know, we say, well, what, what things are important to you? Uh, and, uh, and this is really an engagement tool. And then that information will go into the database. So, uh, you know, since this is a lower propensity voter to try to uh, be able to reach them in the future. And on there, you've got all of these issues that you can check off. 
and oh uh, wow they've been they've updated that yeah. look, look at there's COVID-19 yeah. on there wow yep. yeah. so and you can we can find that out um next bit Texas a battleground state and uh we want to elect a democratic president and this was actually written before Biden was finalized. So you'd be fine to talk about uh, the Biden-Harris ticket, uh, et cetera. And, uh, and then if, if they seem engaged, you can see if they'd like to volunteer. And here's a little box that you can check and they would say yes, no, or maybe. And then we have a query in the vote builder in the van uh, database where we can query potential volunteers and get a list of folks that have said yes. And most people say no, and some say maybe. Okay. And then uh, this, is ba this is essentially the end of this script. Thank you for your time. Appreciate the conversation. Have a great day. And then um, here's some other questions that, that they've included, like, uh, voter communication uh, language if you get to that if that becomes uh, you know if, if the person is uh, speaking Spanish or something like that and and whatnot and you can suss that out you can answer this question but that's not critical and then <clears throat> um, here's a gender pronoun question and I've never used that and uh, Lynn I see you use it I don't, you know, I'm an old guy, so I don't understand all that that well. <laughs> <laughs> and, but I'm going to try to learn. That would be cool. And then uh, if they identify their ethnicity, you can check that in. But basically, you're, you know, you're pretty well done after you, uh, you know, after you've gone and seen if they want to volunteer. So you fill all that out and, and, uh, and then, uh, as Laura said, you'll get to up in the upper right, you get to hit save and go to your next call. So let, let's call Dawn and see. And I'm just using my, my personal cell phone and I'll dial the number. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Most times you leave a message, probably 75%. Hey, Michelle, this is Kevin Henning, and I was calling on behalf of the Kendall County Democratic Party. Uh, we're encouraging folks to be sure and vote in the upcoming election and, uh, you know, would love for you to get involved with uh, the Kendall County Democratic Party. And you can check our website out, which is kcdems.us. You have a good day and remember to vote. Thank you. So, a kind of it. So I left a voicemail, and I can hit the. Why isn't that lighting up? There it goes. There it goes. Just there it goes. a second. So then I get to fill this out, and down here I left message, and as it turns out, when uh, her voicemail, uh, she goes by Michelle, and that was good to know. I don't know. Can we change that? So we know that? Uh, no, Maybe because no. that's that's based on the, what her voter and registration voter. is. So you can't change their name. Yep. And uh, and and she is a uh, uh, has a business that's involved in community service. So she probably would be a good one. You want to try another call? Sure, I do. Uh, let me make a point before you do the next sure. one. Um, you can have as many people using this specific phone bank as as you want 
It's not going to, the virtual phone bank is smart enough. Like Kevin's working on Don Michelle Pittman. So nobody else is going to get Don Michelle. Now, if he skips her, she goes back into the hopper and the virtual phone bank will assign that to somebody else to call. So you don't have to worry about duplicating. The virtual phone bank is smart enough to, to know that, um, to, to not duplicate things like that. Now, Don Michelle will probably go back into the hopper since we just left her a message that say Kevin completed the call and got the questions answered. Then she'll fall off the list and we won't call her again for this particular phone bank. We might call her for a future phone bank, but not for this one. So you don't have to worry about duplicating anybody's um, effort when you're working on a phone bank like this. Did you take too long? Did it time you out? Yeah, it timed me out. I had to come back. <laughs> It'll do that. So you have to, he yeah, it was yakking too long, so it timed him out. So that's what he's having to do here. So one more call, and then uh, we'll stop and see if anybody has any questions. All right. Yeah, and now if you're a van user, you, you can get uh, some additional information. And the neat thing about my computer, if I set it up, I can actually not have to dial the number. I, I can just click on it and it will dial it automatically. I wonder if I can do that. Maybe too much. You may have too many things going on for you. All right, so I'll just call. You can try that. See how the number is blue on his screen? If it's blue on your screen, give it a try. I've never tried that before, but um, yeah, but, but I can just click on it, and my computer, my laptop links up with my phone, and I just talk talk to the computer. But I think that would be too. Uh, it Zoom may interfere with that. I bet. Yeah, it would be. Kathy, Kevin Henning with the Kendall County Democratic Party, just calling to remind you we have a very important election coming up and uh, early voting starts October 13th with election day, November 3rd. Uh, please remember to vote. And if you need any information, don't hesitate to check out our website, which is kcdems.us. Have a good day. Okay, so now he'll record left message. I'll on do that page. again. Yep. You can see how you could get through a lot of, a lot of these at a, you know, because you're not, most of the time you're not talking to somebody. So uh, it's, it's easy to get through a lot of them. I'll it time you out again. Oh, the, uh, there it goes. So left message and then he'll go and up and do save a next call. Um, you notice that she was, he called her Kathy, I imagine based on her voicemail. The data in Correct. this database is a, is a download directly from the voter registration file from the Texas Secretary of State. So that's what her voter registration said. We can't change that. That, that's, that is, you, you can't change somebody's name uh, in the voter file. Um, as far as address goes, since that's part of the voter file, you can record that it's a bad address if somebody happens to have moved, but you can't add a new address. That's got to come from the voter file. And those voter files are, are uh, loaded from the Texas Secretary of State on a periodic basis by the Texas Democratic Party. So that information is uploaded, uh, updated frequently. You know, there's a lot of people registering to vote right now. 
And so they're uploading the new uh, voter files uh, fairly often so we can capture that new voter information. So what other questions do you have? I wanted to, uh, now it says a specific issue. What if they tell us more than one issue? Can we click on more than one issue or not? I don't think you can. Okay. Um, so you just, you would need to ask, you would ask need to ask them what their most important issue is the okay. uh, what what i would try on that is um because sometimes you can pick multiples like that you hold down the control key when you click on them but i'm not sure that's going to work on this i'm, I'm betting it doesn't um okay. I, I think it's just going to be one okay so uh, you'd have to ask them what the most important thing is um okay. so yeah that's a that's a good point yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to see if I can do more than one. No, it'll oh, only let yeah. you do one. You only let you do one. That and that's just an artifact of, of how the how the script works. So okay, here I've got someone who's 83. And let's try this person. <laughs> see if we can get a live one. <laughs> That there on the bottom right of his screen, since he's in van, that's a record of all the times we've contacted the person. And he just zoomed past it, but yeah. you can only see that if you're in van, so. Which I most thought it won't might be a good one because he's been canvassed by Janice Ballard and Laura Bray and Sean Bonner and a bunch yeah. of folks <laughs> over the years. And, and it's funny, I, I don't know, I found late afternoon is the best time to call. Okay. Yeah, and it, it wouldn't let me leave a message. Let's see what that. You had inert. So that's a new message. I've not seen that before. What that it's telling him that he had remember he was up down there trying to put an issue in. Yeah, no, and no it, I can't. And and, and it won't let you do the not home if you've entered data. So that's why it's fussing at him. That that's actually a new thing. So now he's going to go back and say not home, and then save it. And so James will go back into the hopper for somebody else to call at some other time. So, okay, right. and I, my personal experience has been you reach about 20% of the people on the calls, and that's why you don't get worried about overlapping and stuff. Uh, because, and you know, you have multiple ways of, of reaching out to people because you don't, you don't catch them all. Yep. Is this the same software that we would be using if we were knocking on doors? Yes, okay. it's all just about everything we do, postcards, mailings, just about everything we do uh, for voter contact is all based on this van vote builder. Uh, see, it okay. says vote builder up there at the yeah. upper left. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, all uh, just about everything we do is driven by that voter database because that's what that's what controls um, that's what controls who we're, who we're talking to. When, when Kevin and I started doing this, gosh, Kevin, what, three years ago? Um, the Kendall County Democratic Party had not been using VAN very much, if at all. And so we didn't have a whole lot of great data in there. 
and all this work we've been doing for the past two, three years, talking to people and knocking on doors and, you know, finding out who our strong Democrats are, um, our list is getting better and better and better. You know, when we started, we may, may have had a thousand names that we th thought were strong Democrats. Now we're at 6,000. And, you know, it's getting better and better because a lot of the people that are moving into Kendall County are Democrats. And sometimes that, uh, like when I moved from, I moved here three years ago from San Antonio. And so I thought, okay, well, when I move into Kendall County, all that, all that voting history is going to go away, right? Because I'm changing counties. You have to re-register to vote when you change counties. It came with me. It van because when I registered in Kendall County and I used my driver's license number, so Van was able to use that to pull my voting history from all the years I voted Democratic in San Antonio. So all that information came with me. So the for a lot of people that are moving into Kendall County, that information comes with them. Now, if they move from out of state, we're out of luck. Um, so, and, and if they voted... Um, in, in Republican primaries in the past, um, you know, that, that information will, will come through also. But, you know, every time, um, like one of the reasons we, when you visit the office, I'm not sure how many people, have, how many of y'all have done that, but when you visit the office, we have you sign in, that we have all the visitors sign in. One of the things we do with that information is we go into van and we mark those people as strong Democrats because if they visited the office, that means they're interested. <laughs> and so we want to get that information into the database. Uh, so come October, uh, they appear on our list and we call them and make sure they've gone, gone out to vote. So the, the voter database fan uh, vote builder is, is crucial to our efforts. So I guess this, the software that we used when we door knocked for Beto, is that the same software pretty much? They used oh, a different. different, yeah, they used a system called Polis. Right. And it's kind of based on the same software. Oh, hello, Gus. Um, Bark your dog, sorry. <laughs> yeah, um, there's a thing called Minivan on your phone, it's an app on your phone. When you block walk, it's really cool because instead of having a paper block walking list, it just appears on your phone and you can record all the answers there. And the really cool part about it is you show up in a neighborhood, you pull this minivan up, you hit your location and it'll give you the 10 closest houses to door knock on. Which are Democrats. Which are Democrats. Wow. Yeah, and so, uh, but yeah, when when Beto, when, in, when Beto was doing this in 2018, they used a tool, a very similar tool, but it was different. It's called Polis. Yeah, and um, it was a shame, actually a shame, yeah. that there wasn't better coordination. There is this year. Yeah. Um, all of the 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 plan is anyway, and the data team is much stronger this year than it was two years ago for the Texas Democratic Party. But say the Davis campaign or Stephanie Phillips campaign goes around and it's talking to people either on the phone or in uh, block walking, that data will flow through to where we can see it too. So, so we, we get a little bit of that information also. It's called the coordinated campaign is the, the, the way they phrase it. So. In our current uh, phone bank, it's kind of on the way out and we'll be implementing new ones. <clears throat> And then uh, one of the key things that we can do is call the people who haven't voted. And in 2018, after early voting, in three days, we called 3,600 people yep. who hadn't voted to encourage them to get out and vote. And, uh, and it was kind of neat. And we had a top 10 uh, callers because, mm -hmm. uh, you can see, you know, you can see the data on who called and everything. And uh, we had, uh, you know, and our, our kind of calling stars right now are Sherry Thurman and uh, uh, Luke Rosenberger is a good caller too. So mm -hmm. there's, uh, uh, you know, it, it's kind of neat. So uh, if you have any questions as you start doing this, um, 
you can uh, give me a call. My contact information is there. Um, uh, the next training session is going to be on September 9th. Maybe we're, we're thinking about that. But if you are interested in that topic, speaking to boards and commissions, let me know because if we don't hold the training session, I'll definitely send um, the presentation slides with information on how to do that to everybody that's interested. So, um, but it's just, you know, most of all, it's important that everybody, you know, what, the way I phrased it at the Bernie Area Democrats meeting when we did our kind of overall training was, you can't do every, no one can do everything, but everybody can do something. Mm -hmm. And I can guarantee you there's something on that list of volunteer jobs on the, that kcdems.us slash act 20, there's a job there that you would enjoy doing. And we would like to get everybody connected and working for this election because it's just so, so important. So I encourage you to give this a try. And if you have any questions, please give me a call and I am happy to help. Thank you so much. Thank you, Laura. Sure. Great job, Laura. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Adios, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.